Welcome to the RBA Small Business Show, your number one resource for business growth education, insights, and news. Let's get today's show started. Welcome to the RVA Small Business Show, exclusively on the RVA Small Business Network. I'm Joan Bowling, your host for today's show. It's been widely reported that teams function on average at less than 60% of their potential. And while I know it's been more than a few years since many of us have been in high school, the last time I checked, getting below a 60 on any test was considered a failing grade. As a leader, showing your teams how to win requires implementing strategies with measurable ROI and modern technology that can scale across your organization. Joining me in the studio today to talk more about this topic is Jerry Howard, a Marine veteran, author, and speaker who specializes in using predictive leadership behaviors to unlock executive team potential and develop business growth strategies. He is also the founder of Intrepid Impact, a leadership and business consulting agency serving the Mid-Atlantic region. Jerry, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Thanks, Joan. It's my pleasure. Jack Welch, former CEO of General Electric, said that before you're a leader, before you become a leader, success is all about your growth. Hmm. When you become a leader, success is all about your team, others. What are some of the reasons organizations have so many challenges as it relates to leadership? Mostly, they don't understand how each other communicates. So a lot of teams start by trying to get the right people on the bus and in the right seats, but that's called alignment. What we do is we start with establishing a language of leadership that everybody can understand and unlocking the tendencies and the strengths of each team member. I, I want to shelve that language of leadership for just a moment and ask you the how question. You know something's wrong. How does an organization get to the point where they know that the leadership is broken, the links are broken? What is that aha moment? Uh, the biggest aha would be how many times have you tried to fill that position? Okay. Good Whatever point. the answer to that question is, if you're uncomfortable with it, that's the aha. That's the moment you need to really think, should I bring in somebody else to help out? Or at least can I have a conversation with somebody that might have an answer? Does it take a while to get to that point? Or what is usually the time frame? You know, position can turn due to too much work, too much pressure, uh, other positions turning over. Does it take a while to get to that point to acknowledge that they need some help in that leadership? I think it does. It really, in my opinion, is determined by the level of pain that that individual who has to make that decision is willing to experience. If they're just wired for it, then they might wait way longer than somebody who's just fed up. And by that point in time, a lot is broken in the company and you don't have that continuity of leadership because the position has turned so many different times. Absolutely. Now you brought up the phrase language of leadership. A lot of us have our language built in because of either mentors or parents or whatever we studied in school, but I don't know I've ever heard of language of leadership. What does that mean? A language of leadership, uh, the way we teach it, is we use pictures and videos to express leadership concepts that you might find. Just like in Jack Welch's book, Winning, the uh, second chapter is actually called Candor. And candor is expressing something as it is without necessarily beating around the bush. So what we teach is a language of leadership that eliminates the need for somebody to uh, worry that someone's going to be offended because we already know what the language we're speaking is. So if we teach that language of leadership to everybody, we can all communicate effectively and through that process build those relationships and then we can work on alignment because if we have a true relationship built on trust, then we know that the alignment is based on the skill sets of the person, not necessarily whether or not they're failing at the job. In other words, they can do well in their position, whatever its position is qualified for, but they can layer in the language then and grow the team and grow themselves along the way. Now that being said, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but is there a single most important leadership quality 
that we all want to have, that we all need to have to move our team ahead? I think humility is the number one leadership quality. If you are a leader who is secure, confident, and humble, then you're a leader worth following. And that's really where we start. We start with using tools, pictures and videos, as I said, to hold up a mirror in front of leaders so that way they can see what they look like on the other side of themselves. And once you realize that you have what we say broccoli in your teeth that no one's told you about, once we show them that, then they can really start to get to work on themselves. And just like what Jack Welch said, once you work on yourself, now you can begin to multiply that into others. And we use that same language of leadership with everybody so that way everyone speaks the same language. How do you know that you would make a good leader? We, or does everyone lead? We like to say that everyone leads. And everyone has the capacity to be a good leader if they lead the way that they were most well designed for. And so in, in addition to revealing the language of leadership or to teaching the language of leadership, we also reveal the superpowers, the uh, strengths, and also the weaknesses and tendencies of the, uh, what we say, leadership voices. So we all have a leadership voice. Hmm. There's five primary leadership voices. And once we help that individual understand how they communicate, and teach the team how that person communicates, then they can all understand that, hey, when this person is speaking to me a certain way, they, they aren't meaning to be offensive. They're just speaking the way they speak, and that might sound weird to me. So we're not only, we're not only training the leader, but we're training the leader's team so that everyone is on the common ground for the leadership language. You also Absolutely. have expertise in predictive leadership behaviors. Explain what that is. Predictive leadership behaviors is a process of identifying not only the strengths and tendencies, and when we say tendencies, we, this is a nice way of saying weaknesses or negative behaviors. We have a tendency to do a certain thing based on our most natural wiring. Predictive leadership behaviors really extrapolates what that natural wiring is, mm -hmm. and then we use that information to identify synergy, we identify conflict, and we really make sure that the individual, the, the person that's receiving the training, can understand that all human behavior is predictable once we know their most natural wiring. So the good news is that you boost what they have, you layer on what they need, and that way they're able to better develop as a leader and also uh, high tide raises all ships, get the team on board as well for that. That's great, so you train them, you have the language of leadership. How do you assess how well they're doing. What are the data and metrics? There must be data and metrics as far as this process, yes? Absolutely, yeah, we do a lot of team assessments. And these team assessments are a little bit different than what you might normally uh, experience. And the reason why is because the data is already is quantified. First of all, it's gathered anonymously. So someone can comfortably answer the questions knowing that no one's gonna know exactly how they answered. The data is gathered uh, anonymously and then codified into different categories, and those categories range from communication, relationships, alignment, capacity, execution. Those different categories are then um, averaged together for an individual team score. And over time, as we build communication and we build relationships, we continue to measure every quarter or so and watch those numbers improve. We are a quick fix society. I want it now, I want it instant. And a lot of times people in leadership positions are a little bit impatient. How long does the process take in order for the company, the business, and your company to see some forward progress? They will definitely see progress in between six and 12 months, but it's always dependent on how fully engaged not only the leader is, but also the team. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the primary leader, whether they're CEO or whether they're department lead, Whatever the person who is bringing or is bringing the information or bringing me in on or our team in on, how committed are they will determine how committed the team is. And if everybody is committed, they'll see those results a lot faster. But we like to say start with something, start with something small like a, a series of workshops or a retreat. Uh, that way we get a very immersed experience in a short period of time that will bring about transformation. It also shows investment in the employees. Because we, we show up every day, we do what we need to do, but you know that when whoever brought your company in is committed to the growth on a continual basis, then that builds that camaraderie, which again is an important trait for the team and for the leadership as well. 
Why would an organization want to work with Intrepid Impact? What is the difference maker for your company? The difference for, uh, between us and other agencies is other agencies have multiple team members just like we do. We have team members that have experience in multiple disciplines, whether it's media, whether it's uh, like for me personally, I've worked with a lot of small businesses, but also healthcare, construction. Um, other team, other agencies have that as well, but we all speak the same language of leadership. So that, so regardless of whether we're working on a, a media campaign for you or whether we're working on, uh, you know, one of our team members is an HR specialist. If she's writing job descriptions, while she's communicating with the team, she's using that same language of leadership. So all of our team members speak the same language of leadership that we're all trained in and teach. But at the same time, we also have an enterprise level digital system that allows organizations large and small to manage, create, and maintain a positive culture across any geography. So if, you're, if you have team members in uh, Carson City and um, Germany and Singapore all at the same time, we can all get on uh, a Zoom chat, or um, some kind of digital platform and talk about these tools together. So you can have the same language of leadership across the entire world while simultaneously having every person receiving the information in the same training platform. Is that what you call the enterprise level partnership? That's or is correct. that something different? That is that. Yeah, yeah. An enterprise level partnership with us usually starts with something like a retreat or a series of workshops, interactive workshops, uh, but it often grows into the next level, which is uh, the team members adopting that digital platform. And it, it's a very small fee to use the platform, mm -hmm. but then it also creates that catalyst for conversation that they have when the guru is not standing in the corner. And then the last piece is when we teach catalysts. And a catalyst is, is probably the, uh, the most unique form of what we do because what we're doing is teaching someone within the organization to um, teach and train the team members in the organization just like we do. So over time, their need for the guru standing in the corner diminishes. And of course, it sounds like it's a negative for us, but it's not because we're multiplying ourselves throughout the organization and allowing the leader then to continue multiplication without paying huge consulting fees every year. I'm sure you have many success stories to share along the line. And people watching may be saying, well, I'm not a big company. I'm under 100 employees. So is there a smaller scale program that smaller businesses can work with you? That's right. We, we do have programs that are self-study that if you, even if you're a solopreneur, you can adopt these programs. But the one I'm most excited about is, is this program we call Executive Core. And Executive Core is a training program that teaches leaders how to multiply themselves mm -hmm. and lead with what we, call, what we say power, respect, and discipline. And when you are a leader that leads with power, then that means you're going to influence others in a positive way. Respect, that is respecting the differences between everyone. And then discipline, that is continuing to improve yourself over time because when your leaders see you doing that and they see you change, they're going to adopt that same practice and they're going to believe what you're saying. So the program called Executive Corps teaches that to business owners and leaders in companies that are between five and say 100 employees they, don't, they might not necessarily have the budget to hire our team on a retainer. But when we train them, they're developing uh, themselves in a cohort of other leaders and business owners that are in the same, uh, the same walk of life that they are, mm -hmm. while simultaneously getting the executive level training that they might not be able to afford otherwise. So what I heard is the language of leadership, which is universal, what you teach and also what your company is. So that is a great resource for all the leaders but also the teams as well, and then also be able to be a resource to them through the commitment, and then a smaller program, as you call it, an executive core program that can help smaller companies, and then be an access to them for whatever needs that they have. And I'm sure, again, scale up, which is what all businesses want to do. You can't say static in this day and time. You That's must right. be able to have that upward mobility, and to be able to be that successful leader is just absolutely key. That's right. Thank you, Jerry. Just great information, and we certainly could stay talking so much longer about all the good things that your company has done and is continuing to do. For more information on how Jerry Howard and the team at Intrepid Impact are teaching leaders how to ensure success with their unique leadership development and business growth solutions, visit them online at intrepid-impact.com. 
This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, RVA's only online streaming video network dedicated to small business growth, education, trends, and news. I'm Joan Bowling. I will see you next time. This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, presented by the RVA Small Business Network. Be sure to like, share, and join our newsletter at rvasbn.com.